Good morning, gang. Happy Sunday morning. So here we are, just a little more than 13 months away from the probably the most consequential election in most of our lifetime. You know, and we can talk about it all we want. Is polit are politicians going to be able to fix the mess we're in? They caused it. Probably not going to be able to solve it. I mean, we've gone off the cliff. And <clears throat> it's really no surprise. Uh, this has been a project that's been in the works for you know, 70 years. Okay, I mean, you can go back, eh, probably Lyndon Johnson. So let's say 60 years. Uh, that the Democrats have been trying to destroy this country. I mean, you, you go back and you remember the old quote from the Soviet Union that eventually the United States would wind up a communist country and they wouldn't even realize it. We're realizing it, but that's what's going on. You know, it's kind of interesting going into election season. and We're, we're going to start getting into it hot and heavy here pretty quick. You know, you've got all these different candidates saying all sorts of different things. And I mean, there's a bunch of them that you can just rule out. Marianne Williamson's going nowhere. Nikki Haley's going nowhere. Chris Christie's going nowhere. Larry Elder, Will Turd, I mean Hurd, uh, going nowhere. But some of the comments that get made and some of the actions kind of tell you what's going on. Now, it's no secret whatsoever at this point that even the Democrats are trying to figure out how to get Joe Biden off the ticket. And I still firmly believe that Biden is going to be the scapegoat that they're trying to use if, when they get their ass handed to him next year, all the blame is going to fall on Joe. And then they're going to say, we need generational change. We need generational change. I mean, Nikki Haley came out this week and said, we need generational change. She's the Republican, rhino, neocon, whatever you want to call her. But she's right. We need generational change. We don't need some mentally gone, clueless octogenarian running the country. Okay? I mean, face it. Joe, Joe was never up for the job. Okay? I don't care... You know, there was a funny one yesterday. Some Democrat was on Twitter saying, Joe Biden's the greatest president of my lifetime. I'm like, really? So when they start letting two-year-olds on Twitter? Uh, because the only way that's possible is if, if he's the only president of your lifetime. You start looking at the candidates, all right? And on the... Right. I mean, it's it's Trump's to lose. That's it. I mean, as much as they're trying to fight him, trying to say he's not eligible for the ballot, none of that holds water. The courts are never going to allow it. It doesn't matter where. I don't care what state. He will be on the ballot on all 50 states. He's not going to be found guilty in any of these sham prosecutions. Maybe they find him guilty. It gets appealed. It gets overturned. Okay. That's all that's going to happen. I mark my words, Trump will never see a second in a jail cell. Okay? If Hillary Clinton can get away with murder, Trump is not going to have any problem when for a phone call. Okay? I mean, it's, it's amazing listening to all these liberals. Oh, there's so much evidence. Okay, stop parroting Adam Schiff. There's not, there has not been a single shred of evidence anywhere that has said anything to find Trump guilty. <laughs> But let's look at what's going to happen, you know, what, what's going on out there. And the cards are really starting to fall into place here. I think it's pretty much everybody's idea that Gavin Newsom is the one who's going to be on the ticket for the Democrats in 13 months. Okay? He may not be. He almost certainly will not be <clears throat> for the primaries. Okay. But you look at what Newsom pulled this uh, Friday. He vetoed a bill that was passed down, passed in the California legislature. Now, mind you, the California legislature is so overwhelmingly Democrat, it's unbelievable. They do all this 
stacked balloting and stuff, it's a Democrat running against a Democrat. I mean, the, the Republicans are outnumbered in the California legislature, something like four to one. Yeah. But so there was a bill that was passed by the legislature in California that would require parents to accept their children's gender dysphoria, we'll use that word, or they could lose custody of the kids. So imagine this. <clears throat> Mom and dad are getting divorced. Hmm, only happens to half the families in the country, so it's not like it's anything strange. There's kids involved, so there's a custody battle. And little Joey wants to be little Julie. He's four, you know. He wants to play with Barbies instead of G.I. Joes. And mom thinks, oh, this is so cute. I always wanted a girl. Yeah, da, 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 da. I'm going to put him in a dress. And everything. Dad's like, hell no, that's my little boy. He's, you're not doing that. The legislature set in California says, sorry, Dad, if you don't acknowledge that little Joey is now little Julie, you don't get custody of your kid. Sorry, you're, you're a bad influence on him. Right? Okay. <clears throat> you think this is right down the middle for Gavin Newsom, right? You know, hey, you know, every idiotic liberal thing he can come up with, he supports. He vetoed this. Why? He's trying to portray himself as a moderate. Okay? The Democrats are panicked about RFK, who is more of a moderate Democrat. Newsom is trying to paint himself in that picture. This is what I think will happen. Joe will be on the primary ballots all across the country. I mean, Nevada, you have to, I think it's October 10th, you know, so two and a half weeks away, uh, that you have to register to be on the ballot. I mean, we're there, guys. It's the beginning of election season. Newsom doesn't even have a campaign. Everybody says, oh, he's he's getting himself ready for 2028. No, he's getting himself ready for 2024. Because what will happen is Joe will go through the primaries. Joe will get enough votes to get the Democrat nomination. The Democratic convention, Joe will get up on stage and say, thank you, but due to health issues, I'm stepping down. <clears throat> I'm asking all the delegates that supported me to support Gavin Newsom. And that's perfectly legitimate under the DNC rules. <clears throat> so now we have an election that is Gavin Newsom, next generation, against Donald Trump. <clears throat> Polar opposites. Newsom will do, <clears throat> I hate this in the morning. Newsom will do like every other Democrat. He will shift to the middle for the election. And then as soon as he sits down in the Oval Office, he'll go far left. I mean, that was Barack Obama. That was Bill Clinton. That was certainly Joe Biden. This is the way they do things, okay? They lie to the constituency, get the vote, and then do exactly the opposite of what they said they were going to. I've said a million times, hey, black community, please tell me what a Democrat has ever promised you that they've delivered on. You can't find any, okay, because there aren't any. You're in no better shape than you were in the 1960s when Lyndon Johnson said, I'll have every one of these N-words voting Democrat for the next hundred years, okay? He was pretty right. But you look at the big thing that the Democrats are doing, okay? When they have no successes to campaign on, I mean, what's Joe going to come up and say? Look at the economy. Look at the job market. Look at it. Look at inflation. Look at crime. Look at the southern border. Look at foreign policy. I mean, he has no accomplishments. He can't say, "Look, this is what I did in the last four years. Give me more." Okay. And everybody go, "Holy crap! We got four more years of this. We're screwed." So what they're going to do is fall into the, the main crux that they always do. Their, their big buzzword, you know, climate change, the war on oil. This is, this is what we've got going on. Okay. 
And again, this is where I go back to Gavin Newsom, and this is where his crap is going to bite him in the butt, because he came up at a uh, <clears throat> UN Climate Ambition Summit the other day, flew to New York, flew to New York okay, to participate in this. And he comes up and is complaining, oh, California is burning up because of, of all of this oil. You know, big oil is always the fault, at fault. Newsom's comment, quote, a state that's choking up, a state that's heating up with wildfires and floods and droughts, places, lifestyles, and traditions being destroyed right in front of our eyes, despite all of that leadership, despite that ambition. What leadership? Okay. You know, we can talk about a state that's burning up. Why is the state burning up? Oh, I don't know. Could it have anything to do with your mismanagement of the forests? Could it have anything to do with the mismanagement of the water? Okay. The fuel for fires and water to put them out, you screwed up both of those. Okay. You think California is burning? Let Gavin Newsom get in the White House and watch the rest of the country catch on fire. This is what they try to do. He's going to try to blame it on oil. And I mean, I still swear if you want to solve the oil slick prob problem, you know, don't allow Gavin Newsom any more hair gel. I mean, it looks like the Exxon Valdez when he takes a damn shower. But this is, this is what we've got. He's screaming and yelling about, oh, big oil is causing all these problems. And, you know, we have to stop big oil. You know, of course, you get one of those great supporters of Gavin Newsom, Al Gore, you know, the irrelevant person who keeps winding up in the headlines, screaming bloody murder about, we can't have oil, we can, you know, we need to shut down fossil fuels. And everything. You, know, you take a look at these guys. Al Gore's house has been in the news for years about how much carbon he you know his carbon footprint but you look you look at these guys and i've got a real good solution for it let's see you walk the walk i challenge the electric company in california the water company the gas company maybe in nashville same thing for al gore shut off the governor's mansion no more electricity no more gas, no more water. Sorry, you know, the pumping stations for city water, county water, municipal water, whatever you want to call it, they run on electricity, okay? So no more power for you guys that way. Let's see how you do. I challenged the gas stations to forbid the limousine driver to fill up any of Gavin Newsom's caravan with fuel. I challenged the airports to refuse clearance to land or take off for any of these guys in their airplanes. I want to see them walk the walk for what they want us all to do. You know, Al, Gavin, hey, I got a great idea. For one month, I want to see you use nothing that is petroleum-based. That means no suits with polyester in them, no hair gel, Gavin, okay? no electricity, no, no water, you know, I want to see you live off grid, like so many of us are going to, by choice at this point, getting ourselves ready before we're forced to, because of your poor decisions. Okay. The funny part is when we go into next year, the the world is somewhat waking up. You know, you see the mayor of Dallas, for example, the other day. Uh, flipped from being a Democrat to being a Republican. Of course, the Democrats are freaking out over that. Remind me the last time you've ever seen a Republican say, you know what, I think I'm going to become a Democrat. It hasn't happened in a long time, but you hear about every six months or so uh, a Democrat flipping. I mean, Jeff Van Drew was the most recent one in Washington. There's always been talk about Joe Manchin. You know, Kirsten Cinema left and became an independent, though she still caucuses with the Democrats, whatever it would be. But you know, remind me the last time that you've ever heard somebody 
a Republican. I won't say a conservative, but a Republican. All these rhinos, okay, have they renounced their Republican tag to become a Democrat? No. Okay. But we go back to the climate change stuff. And like I said, a lot of people are waking up to the idiosity of this, right? There was a counter convention, I guess, if you will, back in August called the world that was all signed. It's called the World Climate Dele uh, Declaration. All right. The Declaration on Climate. 1,600 people signed this, including two Nobel, Pri Nobel Prize winners. Okay. Noted, noted that climate models have proven ina inadequate for predicting global warming. That carbon dioxide is not a pollutant. No shit, Sherlock. It's what plants need to breathe that makes oxygen for us. Okay? And that climate change has not created natural disasters. Okay? The geological archive reveals that the Earth's climate has varied for as long as the planets existed, with natural cold and warm phases. Okay? The Little Ice Age ended in 1850, and therefore it's no surprise that we're now entering a period of warming. Okay. These are scientists, not astrologists, okay, not pseudoscience, not the same people that believe the science that Dr. Fauci peddled, not the same people that believe the science that boys can be girls, okay? These are people that believe actual science. You know, that that one thing that really strays from a Democrat's thought process, facts, okay. You now it's like listening to all these, there's there's no evidence against Joe Biden, yet we've got troves of it from oh, against Donald Trump. Thanks, Adam Schiff. You know, your credibility is so high. But, <clears throat> yeah, that's the Democrat parrot line. Hey, let's talk about whatever CNN says today, because, you know, they're such a honorable organization. But this is what we've got going on. Biden's not going to be the candidate in 2024. Chances are it's Gavin Newsom, by hook or by crook. They're trying to keep Trump off the ballot everywhere because the only way they... The only, they know the only way they can feasibly win is to cheat. Okay, that's inevitable. They figured out how to do it in 2020. They got caught, but nobody did anything about it. So now they got to figure out how to do it again because enough people figured it out and they're gonna more people are going to be against them. So they've got to raise the bar on how to cheat. This is what's going on. This is where we all talk about, is Joe going to take us to war? Is Joe going to try to declare martial law? Is something going to happen? You saw the stories yesterday, probably, that now the Republicans in a bunch of states are embracing ballot harvesting because they've figured out there isn't enough time to stop the Democrats from doing it next year. So the easier thing to do is to do it themselves, too. Hey, that's great. Let's have both sides start pulling crooked crap, okay? 2,000 Mules, remember that movie? Okay. I mean, there's all the evidence in the world that you need but what, about what happened in 2020. Watch what'll happen about, oh, 18 months from now, 20 months from now. There'll be a video called 2,000 Elephants, and a movie, and it's going to be, oh my God, the Republicans were stuffing ballot boxes or something, right? You know that's coming because they got busted. Now the, the tables are going to turn and it's going to be right on them again. And they don't know what to do. So the only thing they can do is pull out the old playbook. You know, again, let's go after big oil. Let's call everybody racists. I mean, look at the the kid who ran over the retired cop in Nevada, right? Anybody catch this one? Hispanic kid. Hispanic kid and the black kid were the two kids who stole this car and ran over the white cop, right? To cook the books on crime when they booked the Hispanic kid, they marked him as white. If you look at this kid... I mean, he is Hispanic till the day is long. Nothing wrong with being Hispanic whatsoever. But now this will be in the books as white-on-white -white crime. 
even though it wasn't. But all those statistics that you see all the time of crime, that tells you exactly how it, how it is. They're cooking the books on the crime figures. There's nothing that comes out of government that anybody trusts. We are probably at the lowest level of trust of government in the history of the United States, my guess. I mean, we've got, we've got a Congress that can't get above into double digits on approval. I mean, Congress sits around 8 or 9% in approval, okay? I mean, 90% of the people do not approve of the job Congress is doing. Collectively, both sides, okay? Biden can barely keep himself above 40%. So that means even though he got more votes than anybody else in the history of elections, you know, because there were 135 million people that were registered to vote, and we had 151 million votes. Okay. Funny how that works. But yet six in 10 people in this country don't approve of the job he's doing. Okay, If six in 10 don't approve of you, all six in 10 of those people better not vote for him. That means Joe gets 40%. That means Joe ain't coming back. Okay. Yet we still have all this crazy stuff. And the, the people that are following behind Joe <clears throat> are worse. You know, Ted Cruz came out this week and said, quietly, the Democrats are trying to line up Michelle Obama as president. I mean, at that point, guys, move to Cuba, move to North Korea. You'll have a better quality of life. Okay, I mean, you want the final nail in the coffin, let him, her, whatever you want to call it, be in charge because that would just be Barry's fourth term. It's just, it's insane, but keep an eye on it. Watch what's going on because they're coming for it all. They're coming for your guns. They're coming for your free speech. They're coming for your religion. They're coming for your oil. Everything. They are hell-bent on putting us back into the 1800s. Fortunately, you and me are one step ahead of them. But there's 97 some odd percent of the country who's up shit crick without a paddle. And it's going to be our responsibility to lead those people to put this country back together. You may not want the job, but you're probably just going to be thrust into it. Good out.